So good afternoon and welcome to the Iowa City Area Business Partnership Candidate Forum with Sheriff Lonnie Pokrovic. I'm Jennifer Banta, Vice President of Advocacy and Community Development, and I am your forum host today. On behalf of our members, thank you so much for joining us. I know how busy you are, Sheriff, so uh, appreciate your time today. Um, Sheriff Pokrovic has served as Johnson County Sheriff uh, since 2005. He served as president of the Iowa State Association of Counties and as president of the Iowa State Sheriffs and Deputies Association. Um, he is the Democratic nominee for House District 73, which covers Johnson and Cedar uh, counties um, in the Iowa legislature. So the purpose of today's forum is to provide a venue for our members to hear from Sheriff Pokrovic on, uh, on his agenda and to allow um, our members to ask questions. As our uh, business community struggles to keep its head above water right now uh, during COVID-19 and derecho and, and all of that, it's really important, um, more important than ever that people get out and vote and are educated about the candidates. So um, since the global pandemic and now with a major disaster declaration just north of us, we have shifted our focus to economic recovery and continue to advocate for strong policy in regards to workforce development, business development, and community development. And uh, just wanted to let you know that uh, we are always advocating for our members as they grow in and expand their businesses. So with that, um, I'd like to just open it up for uh, your opening comments and uh, let us know why you ran and what motivated you to run and what your ideas are for the future. Sure, thank you, Jennifer. And um, just to back up, the district also includes the city of Wilton, which is in Muscatine County. So uh, I always wanna point that out because uh, I, made, I made a mistake once early on and, and forgot about that and excluded it and, and uh, it was pointed out to me quickly. So. Um, and, and I do have some people I've met with over there. So Wilton is an important part of this uh, district. So thank you for having me. Um, you know, obviously most of you have probably heard of me and uh, know a little bit about my background, but I'll tell you a little bit of additional information. Um, I'm a born, born and raised in Iowa. Um, I haven't ventured all that far from home. I grew up in Blackhawk County and my parents both retired from John Deere and um, went to college at uh, Kirkwood Community College, uh, just down the road uh, south from where I grew up. And after graduating from Kirkwood, I went to Mount Mercy and got my BA. My BA was in criminal justice administration, but an emphasis for a minor in business administration because you know I always I always thought I you know I wanted to become management at some point in time and and was lucky enough to to do so. Um, been married to Julie Polkrabic uh, for 29 years now, and um, Julie used to be really active in the chamber and has been through the chamber leadership program. Um, you know, I, I, I'll do a plug for that program, even though you guys don't call yourself necessarily chamber anymore, but um, you know, I've always, uh, since being sheriff, whenever I was asked to come and present to the chamber leadership program, uh, I always tried to squeeze it in and do that hour of, um, uh, Government 101, I guess it was called specifically for law enforcement, and uh, also uh, was um, pushed my the person who's going to replace me, Brad Kunkel, to be sheriff. Uh, I pushed him to go through the chamber leadership program too because I recognize the value in that. Um, you know, my so besides my wife, I have a son um, who recently got married. We're excited that he got married, and and during during the COVID crisis. Uh, you know, it was, it was um, a lot of challenges, as we all know, but uh, getting married during the COVID crisis was interesting, but it came off uh, for the most part without a hitch. And so we have a daughter-in-law now, and Sam works at Transamerica in Cedar Rapids, so they live just on the edge of Cedar Rapids, and um, our daughter-in-law is a pharmacy um, student, and she is a P4, they call it, so she graduates in May, and so we're excited for them for that. So, um, you know, I had announced that I was going to retire uh, last year. I, I announced it and um, Julie and I were ready to hang it up. And, um, 
you know, some of the things that were happening in the state. Uh, sort of like when I decided to run for sheriff, um, I, I really felt strongly that I could do things better. And, um, and so, you know, I ran for sheriff because I wanted to see some change and be responsible for implementing that change. And, and since becoming sheriff, you know, one of the things that I'm most proud of is uh, implementation of jail alternatives to have an effect on uh, the jail population and the mental health diversion program, the creation of the Joint Emergency Communication Center, which drives down uh, response times for all emergency responders, not just law enforcement, but EMS and fire. And, you know, that, that is a, was a proud moment when we got that project done. And I just decided, you know, I, 35 years, I think I can take some of that, that knowledge. I think when it comes down to our state surviving, I think it comes down to um, how do we train and retain our, uh, our graduates from high school or college? How do we keep them in the state of Iowa? And, and um, making sure that we're training our workforce you know, not every college isn't necessarily the thing for everyone, but um, how do we how do we get them, whether it's some sort of workforce development or or, um, you know, working with the trades or whatever, but we want to keep them in Iowa. But, you know, the strength of Iowa is our education system. And one of the things that I believe is that uh, we've we've not fully funded the education system as much as we should. And so those are those are some of the things I think the mental health care system needs to be addressed. Um, disaster preparedness, as we know now more than ever, I think can always be improved. And I think my experience um, with the 35 years at Johns County will, will help that. So that's, um, you know, that's who I am. That's why I'm running and what made me decide to uh, hang, you know, hang up the, uh, hang up the sheriff's hat and throw on a state legislator hat. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. And uh, we have a couple of questions here and I encourage uh, folks to put their questions in uh, the chat. Um, but I have a, a question I always start out with, um, which is one of our members biggest concern is the lack of bipartisan collaboration, not just at the federal level, but at the state level as well. And just the tone of politics um, I think has really just been amped up in the last few years. So can you tell us, um, and I'm sure you have vast experience of working with people of various backgrounds, but can you just <laughs> give us some specifics on how you've worked with a diverse group in the past um, and then how you plan to, if elected, really carry that forward into the future? To, to get things done. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not running necessarily to represent any specific party. Um, you know, I have a really, I think I have a pretty good track record of being um, a moderate sheriff. There are things that, that people would argue that I'm uh, liberal on, but there's a flip side where uh, people are gonna argue that I'm uh, too conservative. And the bottom line is, you don't become president of those two associations, the Iowa State Sheriffs and Deputies Association and the Iowa State Association of Counties without be able, being able to um, push that, the, the partisanship aside. And I really think that that's what, that's the ability I have that I'll bring to this job is, is that I think my transparency that I've shown while I was in office, my, um, uh, uh, um, accessibility uh, in office. I think, you know, one of the things we did when I got elected and took over is we made our office a lot more accessible. And, you know, I get the partisanship and, and this country really is right now, you can, you can say country, state or whatever, we are really divided. And, but one of the problems I see right now at the state level um, with the partisanship is whenever one party is in completely control, I think that the state suffers a little bit. And so uh, by, by me winning my seat, um, you know, I think I bring, bring some of the middle ground back to the state. It's not gonna be one way or another. Well, thank you. And uh, I heard you talk a little bit about workforce. So I wanted to dive into that because that uh, workforce always seems to be the you know, number one thing that, uh, our business community, our business leaders uh, talk about. So we have record unemployment right now. Um, 
what what can you foresee um, that our state can do to help recover and help our workforce really prepare for whatever's to come? You know, whether it's new technology, you know, tackling new problems like climate change, how can we really prepare our workforce for um, the demands of the future? Well, you know, that, that, that is a great question, it really is. So um, I'm gonna just deviate a little bit from that and, and so that you understand. I understand what it's like to try and train, uh, recruit and, and stuff. You know, the sheriff, my, my, the budget of the sheriff's office is um, just over $13 million. And uh, so that responsibility falls on me to be, to be conservative with the tax dollar or um, not conservative necessarily, but cognizant of how it's spent. And so recruiting is just a very, very difficult thing for those of us in law enforcement. And as I've gone, you know, obviously being involved and in, in knowing people all over the state, that recruiting, retention, training, all is difficult for everyone uh, in every single area. And so it's a it's a area that we've tried to focus and work on and improve. Um, part of the Part of that goes along with uh, adding some diversity to our office, you know, trying to be more reflective of the community that we represent, but it is extremely difficult. I don't have all the answers on, on how we can fix all those um, issues, but what I do have is a proven track record of being willing to try new things, to listen to people, and to work with people, and I don't consider myself an expert in every category. And so just like how I run my office, I have people in a position that they're in charge of different divisions and um, you know, I interact with them and seek advice and counsel from them. And uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's ability to listen and willingness to try different things um, is what I'll bring to the table and hopefully uh, be able to work on addressing the workforce issues and training issues because I totally get how difficult it is. Yeah, it sounds like you have some good experience there to, to work from. Um, and, and that is a comment that we get from pretty much every industry is just um, the pool doesn't necessarily have the skills um, and aren't always equipped for the, the job at hand. So, um, so my next question is, you know, local economies, our, our local economy and our, our businesses have really been hit hard. And I know that you're a Hawkeye fan, so you know um, <laughs> the impact of not having football this fall and just all the layers of what's happened in 2020. Can you talk a little bit about how we can put together a long-term strategy to help rebuild and even maybe reimagine our uh, biz small businesses in Johnson County so that we come out of this and we still retain some of our unique quality, um, which is there's so many small businesses here that make us unique and make us, you know, people love coming to Iowa City and Coralville because of all the wonderful, unique things that we have. So how do we how do we help those folks stay in business and then recover after the pandemic? Well, I think a couple of things. First of all, I, I'm hopeful that we will always be and remain somewhat unique in this area. Um, but, you know, I think we have to look out for, if we continue to, if, if this area can lead the way in safety for our workforce, safety for the people coming in. I actually just last night had a conversation with the current president of the Iowa State Association of Counties, Berlin Matthews. He's a board of supervisor up from Spencer. And, and he was asking about uh, how I felt about if it was safe for him and his wife and their elderly uh, to come to the area and because he, and, and stay, you know, um, at one of the hotels here. And I said, you know, I think people are adapting and changing. They understand the seriousness of this, the seriousness of disinfecting things. And, and I, I told him that I felt it was safe for him to come. And uh, in fact, there's a couple other places he wants to go that I 
sent them to. And now I have to acknowledge they may not be in Johnson County, but they were down by Kelowna. So, but he wants to go to like the Golden Delight Bakery and, and there's a, one of the, the rural stores down there. And so I was sending them across country. If you know where the Sharon Center Road is, I, I gave him directions to go down that. I said, listen, Johnson County is beautiful. That part of Johnson County is beautiful and you need to take that little, little drive. So, but I think, you know, I think we just have to come up with newer, more creative ways to market ourselves and continue to show our strengths and the strengths of our small businesses. And, um, you know, we as a community have to continue to support them. But bottom line is we have to make sure the employees feel safe, are safe, and then that the patrons coming in and the owners uh, feel safe and are safe. And, you know, I think we continue to adjust to what's the new normal. I mean, there are, I've heard of businesses that are talking about, uh, well, my son, for example, working at Transamerica, he's been working from home. And, and is that going to be the new norm? Is there going to be less bricks and mortar um, done out there uh, for buildings, for businesses and things like that? And so I think we continue to adapt, but, but I, you know, I think the thing is, 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 we have a lot of highly intelligent, highly motivated people in this area and to work with them and continue looking for creative ways to market it. As long as we're taking care of our employees and keeping them safe, I think it'll help market itself. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. And I, I love Golden Delight Bakery. <laughs> um, it just made my stomach growl. So I uh, haven't been down there for a little while. Try to try to avoid it, but oh man, it's so good. So. <laughs> Um, you know, just to kind of build upon that, um, one of the things that makes our community great are some of the amenities. Um, you know, I, I think of the Inglert and Hancher and, you know, you name it, everybody's got a favorite spot. I like the mill. I like <laughs> live music, or I used to back in pre-COVID, but there are some other things, um, you know, like our roads and bridges, um, you know, having, a, we have a fantastic airport. I don't know if you've been to the airport recently, but it is just beautiful. Our infrastructure is a really important piece of keeping our community competitive. So do you have any thoughts around, you know, how, how do we really build upon what we have now? And then also kind of bring some things up to speed. I, I know the 38080 interchange is looking great, but um, Iowa's roads and bridges are really aging. So um, do you have any ideas, suggestions on infrastructure and what your focus might be? Well, um, you know, I, there, there are two loves that I have and both of them happen to be on two wheels. One has a motor and one doesn't. So I, I, I have a Harley Davidson. Um, I've ridden motorcycles since I was age 10. And um, unfortunately, I haven't ridden my motorcycle a lot this summer, but I haven't been ridden my bicycle a lot this summer either. But so bicycling is a big thing for me. The trails, you know, having that trail completed between Solon and uh, Ely and on into Cedar Rapids is incredible. So if you ask anyone that is at a local bike shop right now or talk to any of the local bike shops, they can't keep inventory in. And so, um, you know, recreation, we have great outdoor recreation opportunities here and to continue to expand them. You know, I wanna see that trail completed between Solon and West Branch, for example. Um, you know, there's parts of it and I don't know if any of you have ever ridden uh, the section that's, that's uh, crushed rock from Oasis to West Branch, but it's a beautiful trail and um, it all, it is at, you know, it's just spectacular. So it will get more traffic and more people will see it and more people will hear about it once we get that trail completed down through uh, Morse um, and on into Oasis and on into West Branch. And I think continuing to make sure that we offer uh, good trails, opportunities with recreation and things like that, it'll continue to draw people here for that because I think when people are looking to locate, uh, there's so many opportunities in Iowa City, but, but if you talk to the realtors that I talk to say that, you know, one of the big things on the um, checklist for people that want to relocate uh, to an area is recreation opportunities. And so my, uh, I, I will want to continue to expand bike trails. Um, the roads and bridges, 
I, I think definitely need to be addressed. Um, I think Johnson County in particular has done a good job, uh, the Board of Supervisors, when it comes to replacing bridges. In fact, one of the things that um, I learned from and talked to some of the supervisors years ago was the, the um, engineer up in Buchanan County started building some smaller bridges with um, rail, old rail car bases and they could be done so much cheaper. And so that, um, I think there's a couple of them being done in Johnson County now. So I think those are things. I think broadband is another issue because I think, you know, I still see people complaining online, social media or whatever about connectivity and things like that. And so I think that's an area that needs to definitely be addressed. We're not as rural as some of the other parts of Iowa, but but obviously I think we there's room for improvement there and that will help us, especially if, if um, uh, working from home more is the new norm that we, you know, I was talking about earlier. Yeah, so totally agree. Broadband um, I think has become a, even more important in the last few months and yeah. couldn't agree more. So when I think of infrastructure, I don't always think of childcare, but recently I was uh, on a phone call um, and heard childcare referenced as infrastructure. And I, I kind of love that. So I, I'm putting it in this category um, because it does help our workforce get to work, right? And, and work uninterrupted. So uh, in the last session, there were four bills uh, introduced and um, when our session was cut short, the four bills did not go anywhere. We were all kind of waiting with bated breath to see, you know, let's get some of these things rolling. One of them was addressing the child care cliff effect. So if a single uh, headed household makes, you know, a nickel more than $29,000, they lose all of their child care assistance. So oftentimes they're not able to take um, pay raises or, you know, take, take on additional responsibilities um, within the workforce, uh, because if so, they'll lose their benefits. So one of my questions, the reason I'm telling you that is we're hearing more and more from a lot of different businesses that childcare is really impacting their workforce. We see people leaving the workforce. We see interruptions because of interruptions because of we've seen that with COVID. You know, with right. a childcare facility closes down, I'm sure you've got some deputies with with kids in childcare. There's just interruptions. So, you know, have you given childcare any thought? Have you, um, you know, really discussed how we can, as a state, uh, really address the you know, affordability of childcare. We pay twice the national average. Uh, I didn't know if you know, knew that, but we pay twice the national average here in Johnson County for childcare, uh, which means it's, you know, it's expensive to be a parent here. So any thoughts around that or how you might address it? Well, yes, um, thanks. I, you know, um, I'm thankful that our son is raised now because it is a challenge out there. I. I have a friend uh, from the gym, for example, that I was talking to that they were trying to decide if they were going to have to quit their job so that they could, because their spouse makes more money than them and, and they were trying to figure out childcare. This morning, just this morning, literally a friend of mine posted on social media that they are spending two thirds of their income. She's a teacher, two thirds of her income on childcare. And so I think trying to find a way to make child, childcare more affordable I think the state has, um, in, in the last several years, uh, done more to eliminate child care, especially early, early child care uh, opportunities. And I think to reverse that is, is good for the state. I mean, let's face it, we're not going to attract and keep a workforce if we can't address this issue because, um, you know, as, and going along with child care, one of the things that I drags me into is is child uh, mental health care for children, you know, um, in the schools. Because what I see is I see them uh, these youngsters develop into teenagers and then into young adults, and they may have had some mental health issues that weren't addressed at an early age, 
And so it sort of may have made them um, take the wrong fork turn in the road, if you will, as opposed to if, if those could have been addressed at an early age and um, handled, maybe they would have went on down the correct, the uh, best fork that uh, for them and go on and be a productive um, citizen and, and get educated, get a job or do what, you know, do whatever. And so I don't know about those four bills that you talked about. I didn't pay attention to that, obviously. It well, wasn't necessarily in my wheelhouse. Um, you know, I've worked on the legislative committee for, for years for ISSDA. And, and when I was uh, president of ISAC, of course, you know, I was involved on beh their behalf uh, lobbying stuff, but I didn't pay attention to those four, but I'm well aware of it, um, that it's an issue and um, would, would welcome some input and guidelines from people who know much more about it than I do and, and try and work with them to, to uh, do what's best for uh, Iowa and, our, and, and the district that I want to represent. Well, if you ever want me to give you a primer, uh, <laughs> I will help okay. you do that. <laughs> Everybody on this uh, Zoom knows that that's an issue that we've really been pushing here and, and trying to do, some, to do some work around. So, well, um, if anybody else has any questions, I don't see any in the, our chat group, and I think I've gotten through most of them. Um, and yes, I think I have. So with that, I'd love to, you know, just leave you with um, a few minutes to uh, kind of give us your final thoughts and, and tell us why we should vote for you. Well, thanks. Yeah, well, listen, I, you know, I hope that, um, most of you had an opportunity to see how I conducted myself while holding the office of sheriff. It, it really has been um, a huge honor for me to do that and to represent all of you in that. And I think the experience I gained there will really help me represent all of you in, in District 73, for those of you who live there, obviously. But um, I think even if you don't live in the district, understand that, 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 um, that I've earned your trust, earned the trust of voters and that they understand that I bring a vast amount of experience, a level head and uh, a lot of middle ground with me that I drag, that I'll drag to Des Moines. And, um, you know, I, I can't tell you, obviously one of the things I'm running on is education. Um, I firmly believe that we need to fully fund our schools. And we were just talking about early childhood education. If we can, if we can resolve that issue and strengthen our education system by fully funding it, I think we'll make the state of Iowa so much stronger. And, um, you know, I, I want to represent this district and I want to make the people in this district proud that I'm their representative. So I appreciate the opportunity to uh, see you all. Yes, well, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. I know, I, again, I know how, uh, taxed you are right now and, and stretched thin. So really appreciate your time today. Um, I also want to thank everyone who has joined us uh, for this forum and appreciate the questions that I received from you guys. Um, we will be posting this on our website and then pushing it out on social media uh, later this month. So be on the lookout for that. And um, thank you again for joining us. Stay safe and, and be healthy.